Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I'm back to share an update on my Roxy Journal of Stitchery Trifold Pouch that we're making for the month of January um, and also to do some work on it with you and to share some really fun ideas that I've got that I'm adding to my pouch that I thought you might like to add to yours or even if you're not doing the Roxy project but you're making a pouch or a little um, carry case for your stitchery you might like these ideas as well. So it's going to include a little internal pocket um, um, that's also going to function as a embroidery scissor holder um, using some vintage embroidery and a button. Um, it's going to be a little um, needle keep to go inside the pocket. It's going to be an interesting um, idea for a closure um, using something of sentimental um, value to me um, that you might also have something um, that you can use yourself. And then I had promised to come back and share how I thread paint when I'm sort of painting the bits of the petals that fold over. I'd shown some thread painting um, over here, but yeah, I saved um, the thread painting using Appleton's wool here to show how that works. I've got my blinds closed because it's a very sunny afternoon. Um, so yeah, lots to get through, but we'll we'll power power along, and I'll start with just giving you a bit of an update on where I'm up to with the pouch. So I've stitched down um, all of the elements that we laid out together the previous time and um, the embellishments and added some additional um, embellishments as well. Um, so I've got this beautiful um, fabric featuring a French um, sort of chateau garden design. Um, I've got this beautiful little doily which is folded in half and it will be the perfect place if I do want to write a project name using friction marker. Um, I've added this lovely um, aged Suffolk puff with a beautiful little um, filigree button there. Added a vintage piece of embroidery here. Lovely bit of trim. Um, this gorgeous, gorgeous um, sort of broderie anglais but like with a floral pattern printed on this, this lace piece. I just adore that. Um, and I've got this which came off a, a placemat down here. So I just love, yeah, love the flower flower. This is very much a garden um, themed pouch, almost like a secret garden, a secret French garden. So then my pouch opens up. I haven't yet stitched the two pieces together because in the previous videos you would have seen I'm making it as two pieces, which allows me to get this um, lined internal pocket um, and the the main pocket happening as well um, but here I've got the beautiful um, again a little chateau um, scene with a man and a lady um, gorgeous um, bits of lace um, and um, embroidery work on shul coming up here I've started doing just some little seed stitches um, just to add some extra detail into this area here whether I add any further um, I'm not not necessarily finished on my embellishing but I thought I wanted to sort of move on and show you some of the other elements while I play around with any further embellishments a beautiful piece of vintage trim along here another piece of lace down here that overlaps and gives some extra strength um, to sort of the spine of the bag I guess um, and this is actually two bits of um, embroidery but I've done them like the vine and then the flower at the top and then you'll remember we had the rose um, design inside, which I'm doing thread painting on the top two roses. And that's what we'll come back to a bit later in this session. So that's the front. And then we go to the back, uh, which has this lovely, luscious, beautifully um, textural um, little lacy embroidery remnant. Again, got the stem, so the stem comes over um, the spine of it or even over the base I guess of the of the pouch and then comes up and underneath and this is then another another separate flower element um, I've then got lace overlaying um, fabric underneath so two bits of fabric underneath I added this gorgeous um, lace which I just I adore it so lovely so I just love the layers upon layers I think that's really fun got this more sort of yeah just a stripey piece which I think plays up nicely just kind of draws the eye um, up to these different elements so it's got the greens and the pinks coming together um, used one of my um, fabric covered buttons that I made in a recent video so I'll include a link to that if I can remember um, and they're just yeah so lovely um, to just add with some of these very vintage very worn Suffolk puffs but I love how um, this little button which I covered with this fabric links really well between these two flowers with the pinks and the greens and the 
um, that sort of mustardy colour plays out in this as well. I've got a beautiful little bit of embroidery off um, a very old hanky here, which I've just stitched over over the fabric, and then another little bit of um, ribbon embroidery, vintage ribbon embroidery that I've just added here. Gorgeous piece of lace, got my lovely um, forest fabric, little crosses, and where this, um, this particular embellishment had sort of chul. I left some extra chul around it so it's just got a bit of nice nice interesting texture to it and again this piece of lace lining along the bottom. So that is um, the pouch so far. So let me show you my ideas. I'll start first of all with the idea that I've got for the closure and that is to use one of my grandpa's beautiful old um, keys from his vintage key collection. Now I know it's rusty and I know some people get a bit sort of worried about rust wearing into their fabric. For me if it does create any wear um, on this it will just add to the beautiful sort of vintage um, detail of it and the lovely thing is with fabrics you can always patch and just add character to them. So I'm thinking that I'm going to anchor um, this little key down the bottom here as though it's the, the key to the secret secret garden and then I'm going to have a little bit of um, twine or ribbon that would come down and be looped over the key to anchor the the pouch down so I'll probably maybe have two bits I'm thinking that would just so the key would be anchored potentially in the center um, unless I just wanted to have it anchor down or unless I have it a bit further over but I think I want the key to be central so I'd then probably just have two little loops that come down or maybe just one loop and then it just has to loop on from one end and come over so I've still got to um, yeah work out the the details for that but I'm thinking it would be just really lovely to have this little vintage key um, as the actual closure point so stand by for that um, and how I achieve that but I do want to work with you then on what I'm planning to put inside this, um, the first of the internal pockets. So as you remember, I've got a main pocket um, and then I've got a second pocket here that's um, formed by this flap. And what I'm planning on doing is using this beautiful bit of um, embroidery. Um, Christina, I don't know if you, um, from Christina Creates, I think you might have sent me this one with one of your little... Um, happy mail packs so do let me know in the comments if it was from you and it's the sweetest little thing it's got this little um, pocket so I think originally it would have been a part of a placemat and you would have put the cutlery in there that's my that's my thinking um, but I'm planning to turn it into a little internal pocket with an extra pocket so it's got a um, little torn edge here which is absolutely fine what I'll probably do is turn that turn that under, get myself a good little rectangle along those lines. Again it doesn't have to be perfect, we're not aiming for perfection here. Um, and then I'm planning to put it about sort of there with a little bit of gap up the top and I'm planning to turn the little ready-made pocket into an embroidery scissors pocket. So what I'm thinking I need to do is there'd be two options here. One option, I'd just put some extra stitches in so the embroidery scissors can't go any further down. The other option which I want to play with is use one of these beautiful vintage buttons from Lucello. Um, I just adore these. Yeah, the, both of the scenes are lovely. I think I'll use the gold and it's got the little roses on a little trellis, which I think will be really um, appropriate. So let me just trim those off with another pair of <laughs> embroidery scissors. I always have so many embroidery scissors around the desk. You can see actually how old these are. I hadn't actually looked at the backs yet. So they're not, they're not pretend um, vintage buttons. They are real real vintage buttons. You can see the age and the wear on the back. So I think that would be really lovely because what you can do is you can um, have your button so that your scissors can just sort of clip and close around it. Now I will just need to check if this one has enough of a shank on it that would allow that to occur. 
yeah, there's enough of a gap. So basically we'd be stitching it on and then you'd be closing your scissors so that they just sort of sit and are held by the button. So that's the, that would be the plan. And so I'd be wanting to stitch my button on, I guess, like, yeah, I think it goes that way because the stem's growing up like that. Um, and to stitch my button onto here. But then I'm planning to have this area here as another pocket into which I could put things like my friction marker because it's, the, it's enough of a depth. So if I've just stitched it down at either side and then I'm thinking of making myself just a little, um, and I'll probably actually sew this together. I could make a little uh, sewing um, needle book, but I might just make a little padded um, needle and pin holder where I can just easily put in um, some pins and some needles um, and have them handy in my um, in my project bag and just have them slip again into this extra little internal pocket. And then that way, if I've got other things like threads, um, it's all just going to be held nicely in place. So it's actually going to give me now three pockets in a single, a single pouch. So I think that's going to be a fun idea. So whether we get to this stitching that today, but I'll probably do a um, blanket stitch or actually I might use my German knotted stitch, which gives a lovely little outline and then I can always applique something else onto it if I if I want but let's um, work on this first of all so you get to see how you can use the button to make the little little closure so I'll work on it off the off the surface because I don't want to stitch it down yet because I want to leave it as a pocket so I might just grab my grab my clips because we can do all the stitching down at the one time and I'm not worried that it doesn't have a border here I think it all just adds adds to the interest I could have reused the border from this side but I want to leave it sort of finished um, underneath so that the pockets sort of yeah finished on the interior so I think that will be pretty good um, so let's get ourselves threaded up. I hope you're having a great day or a great evening, whatever you're doing. Let me just grab down my, my needles. I'm trying to see where one of my favourite... Do you have favourite needles and that you keep going back to? That one's a bit fine. So funny, I actually cleaned out this... Um, when I say cleaned out, but I found that all the needles, a whole lot of them had actually gone into the interior of this... Um, I kept wondering where they'd all got to and then discovered them inside hiding. Um, and what will we use for thread? Let's just use a nice neutral coloured thread. Doesn't really matter because it's going to be behind the button, but that will do the job. Now, where did I just put my needle down? There it is. My usual trick, lose the needle. But yeah, I've had so many projects on the go. It's been kind of kind of hard juggling across all of them and so many ideas for new projects. I just had such a fun time um, creating the uh, covered buttons. They are just, they are addictive, I tell you, addictive. Okay, so let's, let's pop through. Oh, and I suppose I want it to be pretty much central above here. probably actually should come through from inside the little pocket and then we won't even see the end or have anything that's catching. So let's do that. It's always good to think where you're going to secrete the end of your, your thread. Let's pop through about there. Let's make sure we get our little trellis up the right way. Such a lovely button. I think this was where they only had just like two of these buttons on their side. I'm sure I would have bought more if there were if there were more. They sometimes just have little treasures that the owner of Lucello has found. I really shouldn't look for more treasures, but I find it hard to resist treasures. I really do. So we'll just get a few stitches in and then we'll check how it's how it's looking. So I'm just putting. So 
I'll just do that, but we will need to put a few more reinforcing stitches in if we're happy with um, yeah, how it's looking. Because what I'm thinking is we would then put our scissors in our pocket and then we would clip our scissors around our button. And then that would hold our scissors, especially when the pocket is sewn in place, um, would hold our scissors and they won't come out the bottom of the, the pocket, but they've got somewhere to, to sit in there and there's no way that the blade will um, poke anyone, which is really handy. Um, and if I want to just be extra sure that even if they slipped out, they wouldn't come out, I could put some, um, yeah, some stitches in here, or I could just put them so that even if they did happen to slip out, um, I'd put some extra stitches so it would actually just let the point out but hold them in place. And that would be the other option. Um, if you didn't want to use the button to clip them around, you could just put stitches and have the little pointy bit there. But I still think there's a risk that you could um, stab your fingers a little bit. So I think the button is the better, better option. I saw someone in the Facebook group that had ended up with this beautiful little bee that they had um, made and they were wondering if it was too big to attach to their piece and I actually suggested that they create a, a little um, bee um, scissor keep. So if you're watching, if you happen to be watching that, um, here's kind of a, a bit of an idea of how you can use little applique objects just like I'm using the vintage embroidery. It just happened to be a pocket but you could do something very similar yourself just with a little cut out from a embroidery and yeah I've used this little technique of a button in previous pouches to create a little hold um, for my scissors so I just want to get enough thread in that it's going to stay nice and secure just tie it off properly at the back it's a lovely linen this one and of course I put um, hand cream on my hands because they were looking looking dry, um, but now it makes things a little bit slippery on occasion. Oops, and I've just created a loop at the back, but we'll just stitch the loop down. Okay, so that will be our little, little pocket. I think that will be beautiful and that way we get to enjoy seeing our button. Um, but we've also um, yeah, got this little thing. So let's also do our little stitches down the bottom um, so that if it did happen to escape, it can't fall all the way out. Again, I'll secrete my thread in my in my fabric and I'll just keep using the whitish thread I think and I just won't sell it so in the exact green area I'll just unclip my scissors for a moment so thinking all, all the folks in Queensland because I know you've got some extreme weather coming your way so I know I've had a few of my commenters on my video saying they're preparing for the the cyclone so I'm sending my very very best and hopeful thoughts to you that you come through it um, without damage to, to property or or people it just seems to be a well a summer over here but a winter overseas of yeah very intense intense weather big dumps of snow over in some parts and flooding in the UK again um, yeah friends on YouTube or in some of my little stitchy communities who've been impacted so just really really feel for everyone so I'm just putting some little stitches here along the inside of this little stitched element I just love these vintage embroideries they're appliques they're just so so delightful and the stitches I don't know if you can see just how minute these little green stitches are it is incredible the level of talent some of the the stitches of our past had okay so that's probably enough on that side so I'll just travel myself across to this side and just put some 
stitches in here as well. So just doing them really small in that you can't even see them, they're just in the margin between the white and the, the green. Gonna have to look out for more of these little placemats that have the little cutlery holders. I think they're incredibly sweet. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this one came from Christina Creates, who's got a YouTube channel as well. I'll try to remember to link her in my description. That way she can let me know if this came from came from her. always fun to exchange little happy mail packs with others and get other little little supplies it's been lovely seeing some of the things I sent her in her yeah Roxy journal of stitchery projects I think quite a few ended up in the, the treasure hunt piece that she worked on and then I've seen Leanne using some of mine as well from a little happy mail I sent her quite a while ago now actually um, so let's show you how it would work even if we didn't have the button and if this slips through these can slip down that far but they can't actually um, slip out but that would be the other solution if I was happy to just have this sort of wobbling around or I could do it so that it holds it even a bit more a bit more securely or you could also do it where you put something else in that could be a little um, pouch again you could use something like a bit of um, quilting to just create a little padded pouch but I think I'll quite like to just be able to clip my Clip my scissors around the buttons and have it go that way. So that will just be then a simple task of um, stitching down. Um, we can actually, let's do one side just so you get to kind of see um, the process. I might start on this side given we need to get um, all the bits of it, all the bits of it down. Um, let's start that. Again, I'll probably use the same thread, but I'll get a new bigger, bigger piece of thread. And it's whether I want to do a decorative or whether I'm just doing a, a regular stitch. I'm just having a ponder while I while I think. Is that one or I could use a darker? That's probably too cream, isn't it? Well, that's actually okay. Probably doesn't really matter. I'll use that other one, I think. Got my drawer of all different threads next to me. I find I like to keep the things that I use most often, most frequently. Um, yeah, keep them, keep them next to me. So I will use a pin I think and just as much as I hate pins I will just hold this sort of where I want it. I don't need to keep my scissors there for the time being. Um, just put my other pin actually here I think. And then I can unpin this piece and turn it over, which will make it a bit easier to stitch. So again, I will secrete um, my end in here because this is also a, um, a pocket um, that's fully lined and so that will be visible. So I may as well just um, sort of hide it, hide it in there. I think that's about equal distance across. And I'll just put in an anchoring stitch to the back and then I'm going to pop up just close to where I was on this side anyway and then I'll start the process and I'll probably just do a just like a running stitch I think with just short stitches on the back and slightly longer on the front so kind of the opposite of and well it's going to be more invisible on this side and less invisible on um, this side because I don't mind having the little sort of decorative stitch and again I could have used a green if I wanted to I can even whip this afterwards with a green thread if I feel so inclined but for now I'll just do a little little running 
a stitch. In fact, I wanted to do a shorter stitch on the back. Let's do that. You can just angle your needle as you come through so you end up with a short stitch on one side and a longer stitch on the other. So I can just angle my needle so it pops out a bit further, a bit further along, but with a short stitch at the back. So you can barely see that stitch there. And so this is going to end up folding in these two um, raw edges on this side and giving me a nice um, finished edge, which is great. So again, I'll pop my needle back out from a similar spot, but then pop it on an angle so it pops out ready for the next little, little running stitch. Again, angling it so it pops out. I just bumped with my, sometimes my hand just <laughs> goes out, I go out when I've got a long bit of thread, I go out at quite an angle. Bump everything in sight. But no, very happy with how this little pouch is coming together. I um, saw that my friend Martha, she's made her as, hers as a crossbody bag because it's so, yeah, these end up so pretty. You could definitely wear them as, a, as an outer bag. I think I'd be very happy to, to wear this, although I don't tend to, I tend to just, when I go out these days, often I'm with Travis anyway, and um, I just have his, um, his doggy bag with his doggy treats in it and various things that you need for dogs. Um, and, I, and I just pop my phone and if I need a card for anything just pop that in there as well. I do have some lovely lovely purses and things but just don't tend to wear them that much these days. Probably become a lot more, I don't know, not utilitarian in my dressing but just yeah a lot more basic. I think it was the whole time when, we, when COVID and everything was happening and we all kind of yeah dressed for comfort and it's been kind of hard to hard to come out of that and particularly remote working it's not like you have to get all suited up quite happy getting around the house on a hot day with bare feet not having to put on shoes and get blisters from hot feet all the days when Melbourne decides to put on a rain shower and you get wet wet feet on the way to work and don't miss that at all And right now making this video rather than um, commuting home. People often say, how do you manage to make your videos? Well, it's just, yeah, the fact that I don't have long commutes and I'm not exhausted when I get home. I can happily stitch in the evenings and sometimes, like tonight, when I've got dinner already prepared, I can be, um, yeah, stitching, stitching before dinner, which is lovely. So yeah, I'll just go all the way around, but as you can see, that's um, formed up the little pocket here and I'll just continue to do um, that stitching um, the whole way around. In fact here, I don't know, I might even follow this little thing or I might, I might still go across the bottom. I've kind of got the option of which I do or I could even follow the outer little little scallop. So plenty of options there. I shall work that out. Um, I'll just leave my my thread here for now I guess. Oh, actually I might tie it off because otherwise I end up tangling myself and causing all sorts of problems. So let's let's not be lazy Christine. Let's actually <laughs> let's actually tie it off. This evening Christine will thank um, this Christine now if I do this because it will mean that I won't have a little thread somehow stitched into something else that I didn't want. So there we go. So that's that. How are we going for time? Okay, let's um, turn this while we've got time into a little um, cohesive little needle hold. 
I was thinking, yeah, I'll just, I might use this beautiful um, variegated, it's just a cheapy Milford satin pearl thread. But it's variegated and it's lovely. It's got the greens. So I think I might use that and do some German knotted stitch, which is a version of blanket stitch that I particularly like that we learnt as part of our um, stitch along, which was last end of last year we finished. Can't believe it was last year. It feels so funny. Oops, just going through my needles. Trying to find a needle I want to want to use. I thought I had a nice long one. Where has one of my nice long ones that's too big? That's not the one I was after. Give that one a go. So I've got to push through a bit of wadding. We'll get to the roses, don't worry. I will make sure we get to that and do some thread painting. Um, maybe I'll start down here. So again, I'm going to secrete the end inside. So it's not in the way. stitch there to start us off and I might just clip it again because it just helps to hold it and that way I don't need pins so it's a win-win all round so you start like you would a blanket um, stitch and then you put another stitch a bit closer to the the one that you've just done, but again, like a blanket stitch. Just pulling the, the thread through. So you've got two sort of blanket stitches. Then you take your needle back under the stitches on the surface. So under the first one and under the second. Pass your needle through. And then you get this lovely little knotted effect which creates a little V. I always think they look like little people holding hands once you get a few in the place. But it's just one of my favourite little edging stitches these days. So again, creating the loop. You can do a little bit of blanket stitch and then your next one just next to it. Again, catch your little loop. And then come back underneath your bits of yarn. And then pull it and you get your V. And then jump forward and create your next blanket stitch. And your next one next to that. Try and keep it probably easier actually doing it down on the surface so they don't end up wonky on the other side. It's just a little bit skewy. Just tighten it up, hold it while you put your, your needle under. So my needle's quite sharp and it's trying to just catch the fabric rather than I should be back. You can do it with the other end of the needle. I'll show that show you that on the next step. Go along here. Do our next blanket stitch. Next one next to that one. And then yes, if you do have a sharp needle, it's actually probably much better to pass your eye of your needle back underneath and that way you don't get it caught. We'll just do this to the end and then that's probably giving you enough of an idea of the, the process of just doing a nice little decorative stitch around your needle book or your little needle pad, I guess. That's what we'd call it.
curse of the the hand cream <laughs> again slippery slippery hands so again using the eye of my needle to pass it back through almost gives you a tapestry needle sort of effect which yeah works works well these tapestry needles have a quite blunt end so they are good but they're not good for pushing through things where you need a sharp so using the eye of the needle is definitely the best option here I like how I'm getting the variegation, the changing colour from the thread. Okay, like that. Pass the eye of the needle back through it. Probably just do, I'll just have to get the corner to sit a bit better together. Do a final little one here. Just get it to push through. Make sure it's sitting where I want it, not sitting around the corner. I want it just to sit here. And then we can do our little knotted stitch so that will be that side and then I'll just yeah turn myself around the corner and continue down down the other um, edges if you wanted again you could be creating yourself another little pocket within a pocket if you wanted something for example to put a bit of thread in but I just want this just to be a little little needle pad so that will be able to go very um, happily into um, into the pocket and sit in there with our with our scissors actually I was using I was planning to put my shorter these are my shorter embroidery scissors which I have more of and um, they're the ones I take take when I go when I go traveling so that will all sit in there happily sitting there and then I can also have my pen sitting in there and if I had like a little a little book this is just like a postcard just to demonstrate um, I could have a little um, yeah, little notebook or something would happily sit in that pocket as well and then um, the pocket itself would also then be able to hold some things like threads etc so yeah I think that's going to that's going to work fantastically fantastically well I will unclip the heavy things out of here because we'll now move on to doing some um, embroidery on our flower up here so I'll move the rest of the pocket out of the way and I think I've already got some thread some light pink already ready to go um, so I've used I think I used actually two darker threads and then a medium on this and then um, yeah I'm just going to come through with this lightest color thread Again, I might use my nice big, big needle. This that's good for good for wolves. And so, what I want to do because we're kind of working on these areas where the petals have sort of folded over, I want to use a similar. Actually, change the direction I'm stitching, um, and just do some nice sort of curvy stitches. So let's just let's just start out. I think these ones I'll actually do them because they're more. Um, on the very outer so I think I'll continue that direction there but these ones I think I'll delineate with a bit of curvature so I'm going to pop through here and then I'll pop around to one part of the curve but I don't want my thread to run across straight so what I'm going to do is pop my needle back up here halfway along and I'm going to hook my wool underneath and then I'm going to put a little couching stitch in which will hold the wool up so in more of a arcing shape and then I'm going to come along and do that here as well turn the air conditioner off because sometimes it makes I think it makes just sort of um, 
disturbs the sound quality, but it's getting warm in here, probably because I've got my little lights on because I've had to, yeah, close the, close the blinds. So that's also done that similar couching effect. Um, and then I'll just continue laying some little stitches like that. The next one I think I'll be able to lay um, across the whole area and just couch it in the very, the very middle. So with the couching you're really popping up and going back down the same point and then I'll do another little couching stitch over here to draw this up to up to the top. So you can either do it in little six sections or in a big section like I'm just showing you now but then you just still put in those extra little couching stitches to get the to get the thread to sit where you want it to sit. Don't know I might bring you down a little bit just so it's a bit easier for you to see and so I can see what you can what you can see. So I know thread painting can be a little bit intimidating, but yeah, there's no right or wrong way. You could definitely continue still out with the um, with the pedal, the stitches in the same direction as the other bits of the pedal. I just think this is going to probably give a nice little effect. But we can always add some little vertical um, stitches as well as the sort of across stitches. So again, I'm just hooking my hooking my wool. So it's been just yeah, so lovely seeing everyone's different um, takes on these pouches. Everyone's been having such a lovely time making them. Even if you haven't joined in so far, um, yeah, you can definitely make make a pouch yourself, whatever design you want. I've shared yeah, my little version that has these um, these extra little pockets in it. Um, so now's the point, I guess, where I might actually um, integrate it in and do some little ups, up and down stitches as well in this little section which hasn't yet been shaded. My thread painting is just very intuitive. I kind of just go with where I think, um, yeah, the design and my thread is guiding me. There's no right or wrong way. It's just thinking about what do you want to, what do you want to evoke with your stitching. I just thought I'd show you a few different ways to to do it. So I'll do the curving with a few sort of up stitches here, and then on the outer, I think we'll just do some up stitches. So you just get to see the different different effects, and just have a play around yourself. What's the worst that can happen if, if you ultimately decided you didn't like these across stitches? You could undo them, or you could just do some up stitches over the surface, and that would give you some extra texture as well. So don't be afraid. But with the thread painting, I definitely say just sort of keep keep at it. You need to get a bit of massing of it first before you judge whether you like it or not. When you first start out, it's going to look a bit weird because you're only just starting to lay down. It'd be like if you um, were painting and then you'd only done a few strokes. You don't kind of yet know what the, the what the overall effect is going to is going to be. So yeah, I think that's beautiful because it's giving the sense of the, the petal sort of, yeah, folding, folding out, which is what you want. So we'll do the same. Well, actually, let's just go out and do some, and I might just do a little bit of this still at the edges because I think it does actually work well. So let's do this one up here and just lay down our little curvatures first. I really do find thread painting just like I find covered buttons. Um, I find it addictive. Once I start, I just get really into the the mode of it. I just love it. I'm sure I'll happily sit and, and finish this diet, although I've actually got my colour inspirations journal, which I'm working on with Annie Claxton for her, the project she's hosting. 
um, and I want to want to do um, a bit more on that as well. Such a fun project. And I've been working on the botanical beauties um, with uh, Corinne and Susanna and Tia's little project. Just had a video making a pansy brooch to go in my vintage seed pocket pouch. So I've got to finish putting that pouch together, which is going to be so lovely, I think. So I've done my little curvature there, but I'll continue along and do the curvature all the way along this little outer outer edge. Although my, these I might just do as little straight stitches. So if you don't want to do the curving and the couching down, you can just sort of follow your um, line, particularly here where it's just a little internal line. I can just do that as individual little straight stitches that come together to make a curved surface, sort of. And then I'll do some up and down stitches. That sort of run along with the other, the existing darker coloured stitches. So the sort of the petal stretching out, I guess. Oops, just managed to unthread thread the mini needle. So I'm not having to worry about the back of this because this will be sewn onto the um, the other pocket so it's not one of the lined um, so as in not the other pocket the other side of my pouch so it's going to be all concealed so it's kind of good that I can do the really intense thread painting and not worry about the back it was just because that other area um, is going to be a pouch that I needed to worry about what the stitching looks like on the back and just keep it nice and neat so that my pouch doesn't my pocket doesn't kind of catch things in it so it's good to kind of think through what how your pouch is going to work before you start out but then you can add things like that, that little extra pocket was just something as I was going through my supplies and I found that beautiful little green placemat with the little mini pocket that I thought oh that would be so good on my piece I was originally just thinking as a little embellishment but then I thought oh I could make a pocket because it's always so handy to have one of those little scissors with you. Obviously not if you're flying, I don't think you can take those ones on flights. Um, but most of my travel these days is in the car and yeah, just having that little um, embroidery scissors to snip your thread or snip a little bit of fabric or something. So, so handy and just handy having it in the pouch because if you've got that pouch on your lap, you can just easily reach the scissors rather than having to dive into a bag. So this is really just long and short stitching thread painting with Appleton wool, which is a thinner wool than, say, a tapestry wool. But again, use, use what you have. I've shared other videos recently, the pansy video, just using regular cotton for thread painting. A more sort of sketchy style of um, thread painting, whereas this is like for filling in the whole, the whole shape. And the wool's good because it's a bit thicker, so it's quicker to, to fill it in. But all different styles of... Um, threads can be used for thread painting. There's no one right or wrong. Experiment with what you have. That's why I do enjoy using just the yeah the vintage sewing cottons because hopefully most people either have them or you can easily find them at sort of op shops or thrift stores. So they're a very, very approachable thing and you can very quickly at a thrift store build up your collection without spending a lot of money um, and just have those to to use and as you've seen they're also great when you're stitching down elements um, just yeah using those okay so I'll tie that off afterwards at the, at the back um, but hopefully that's starting to give you an idea of that let's do this in a in a petal as well which would be where um, the petal is sort of yeah turning turning out so I think again I'll do the outer the outer rim with um, yeah the the longer stitches. So let me find where my my thread is. I think we're using this lightest colour, aren't we? Yep. Get rid of the thready bits on my thread. The wool always likes to sort of gather gather things unto itself.
So I'll be sure to come back and show you the closure with the, um, the key. I'll just work out the, the engineering of that, but I thought I'd give you the idea. I know the um, Roxy Girl's going to show us that some versions for closures themselves as well. I think some um, Rachel's going to show us a really interesting way to make a button or something. So after having made my, um, my covered vintage style buttons, I'm fascinated to see her, her version. Let's see if I can find another button addiction. It's just the tail from before that I didn't actually tie off. That's okay. I'll try not to catch it. It might just pop up and I'll try doing laying a longer, a longer thread and catching it down like I was doing before. So I'm going to take it over to here and then I'll just need to put some little couching stitches in to hold it where I want it. So one up there, holding it into the curve up there. And then one up here. down to here as well and then I'll continue back um, and do another layer of it across here here I'm just popping in almost like a, a split stitch but not a full split stitch in that it's not halfway along it's just sort of anchoring down the previous and just sort of following the, the direction popping up inside that last stitch and just using that to then sort of pop, pop forge. Now I might go all the way back to here and then couch this one down a little bit along the way. Couch it down here. Couch it down up the top. Do another curve here and just couch it down along the way. Couch it there and then couch it over here. And so with this, I think. I think I'll probably do, I think I'll follow this, um, yeah, these curves and not do the straight stitches here because I think all of this is kind of like the, the petal sort of flopping over. So again, it's very intuitive as I say, it's just thinking about what's the effect that I want to create, what, what suggests to the eye the way the flower actually is. gonna then just couch it down at the points where it needs to angle up or down. So 
almost sitting right there anyway, but I'll just put a little little holding stitch in. Just where you've got the longer the longer bits of thread, it's always good to have a couching couching stitch. Here I can probably just do some little short filling stitches in here. Again, just laying a few over each other just so you don't, don't kind of get a, a straight line. You're just kind of melding, melding it. No harsh angles in thread painting. And then I might do this lower curvature to start, start filling in from the bottom. down and get dinner out of the fridge. I've got some beautiful chicken that I roasted yesterday after Alex got home from hospital so that was great. Procedure is all done and he is now just yeah recovering. He's got a bit of pain from the the two incision sites but um, he is now good and his heart is protected which is the most important thing. So a little bit of pain for um, a lot of peace of mind. Here I might just do some, I just want to avoid sort of a line so I'm just going to make sure I'm not couching it down all at the same, same spot otherwise you kind of get a bit of a couching line running up so I'm just going to couch this one down a bit further over. But you can always do some extra over stitching anyway. I'm going to pop up inside some of the threads and just yeah lay a few extra threads across the area just to fill in the, the petal area. Yeah, I think that's that's coming together um, beautifully, and I'll just need to yeah continue continue around doing the same. So out on here, I'll probably lay down some um, some curved stitches on the outer, and then do the down stitches here. Both sides will be filled in as I've done over here. Um, this one I will do just like that one. In here, I'll do some long strokes going out. Here, I'll just lay down an outer curve and then do the do the long strokes. So really, what you've seen me do. Um, so far but just um, yeah creating that that lovely effect of the light catching the, the petals in a different way so hopefully you've um, found that helpful hopefully you enjoyed those other um, ideas give me a comment or a like or if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see more videos all sorts of videos not just pouches um, lots of fun creative ideas and I'll see you soon hopefully take care everyone bye